praise the Lord. He alone is worthy to be praised. We serve a great God, and besides Him there is no other. He's our Alpha, our Omega, our beginning, our end, our first and our last, our all in all. And Lord, we give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We honor and adore you this morning. We praise your holy name. And Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace this morning. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. 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 He can do exceeding abundantly above all. We dare to ask or think according to the power that worketh. In us. Amen. Amen. Why don't you have your seats right quick? Amen. And um, unto him we give all the praise. We give all the glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the power that worketh in us. Amen. But ye shall receive what power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. You shall receive power. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Amen. Amen. Because one thing about our Lord, he showed enough will do exceeding, Amen. abundantly, Amen. above all. Amen. All I wanted was the air. Amen. Amen. All I wanted was the sound system to work. Amen. That's all I wanted. But he went and did exceeding abundantly above all. Because see, what you all didn't know, the man told me he could not um do this, put air in here today. Right. Because the parts didn't come in. It's a special fabrication that they have to do to fit the wall on the outside. Right. So he said we wouldn't be able to do that until this week. Okay. But because, Thank you. but because Thank you. I didn't trip, you know, I didn't say, hey man, look here, I told you before we started, don't come to me with no, I, I, we sit down at a meeting, I told you, don't come to me with no excuses. Let's go. No, I ain't trying to hit, I, I didn't go there. While he was talking, I said, Lord, what are you doing? All right. See, I, I'm going to stay peaceful on purpose. You understand? I'm not going to let a circumstance or situation take me out of my character. So, so, so instead of going off on him and telling him it's going to cost you, I just said, okay. Amen. And then I hung up the phone and said, Lord, this is in your hand. I'm not going to trip. I'm going to stay in your presence. I'm going to keep giving you the praise. I'm going to keep giving you the glory. I'm going to honor the Lord on my soul. And all that is within me will bless his holy name. So I ain't say nothing. You know, we just kept working. That's what we going to do. We went and bought a whole bunch of ice. We went and bought a whole bunch. Just, you know, because we going to do our thing regardless of any circumstance. So you know we in here working round the clock. Look, look at that rap. Look, man. Look, look, look at that rap. Now if that ain't the most ingenious thing I've seen, according to the power that worketh within us. Y'all excuse me for a minute. I, 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 but God is just so good. He, he, oh, he's so good. He's so good all the time. So, so we didn't trip. We just kept working. That's that's what we do. Amen. We don't stop. We don't back up. We don't sit down. We don't cry. We don't pout. Right. We don't fuss. Amen. So why are we going buying 
all brand new equipment. Well, thank you, Jesus. Ha, hallelujah, Lord. And working. Ha. Doing what God called us to do. Hallelujah, Lord. You understand? We in there working. We take a break to go eat because we've been there since 7 something, Saturday uh -huh. morning. We worked in there until about what time? 9 o'clock. Amen. Amen. In and out of here. We get a call from the air conditioning people oh, asking, can they come work? Right. I said, yeah, you can come work. We here, we working, so yeah, you can work. Amen. 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 I didn't know what they was going to do. They said they couldn't get the parts until okay. next week. Right. So whatever y'all got to do, come on in here and do it. Let's do it. So we in here working, praising God. Giving him the glory. And all of a sudden, the air conditioned man said, Mr. Jackson, we're going to rig something for you. Just to make sure you got air in here Sunday morning. Yeah, we're going to rig up something. We're going to throw something together. Even though the car's not here, we're going to throw something together for you in it. Because, see, when you don't trip, when you put it in God's hands, he works it out every time. And that's why it might be 97 degrees outside. It might, but 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 it's only about 77 up in here. It may be 90. Because he will do exceed abundant above all. Hey Amen. I just wanted new cords for the for the sun. I didn't know we was gonna get brand new speakers, monitors, what all that other stuff they call it. All bunch of stuff. Because he will do. Exceed. Amen. 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 And, and I want to thank each and every one of you. Because see, the tithes are supposed to go to the priests in the house. The offerings take care of the people. But it's your arm. It's those of you that pay your pledges. Yeah. It's those of you that are diligent yeah. that make all this here happen. Because right. yeah. see, everybody ain't owning oh. their properties. Oh. See, but God, Come on. you see, yeah. when, when you got a people that's going to go over and beyond, God will go over and beyond. When you got a people that step up to the plate, ain't working, but ain't going to have a job, and sit up and pledge a thousand dollars, and it's not their tithes, it's not their offerings. It ain't got nothing to do with that. They still giving tithes, still giving their offerings, and that's how we could have two and a half acre property. That's how we could have buildings and houses because some folks love the Lord. Some folks check this out. Now, I gotta talk. I gotta talk. Let me check this out. Check this out. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Uh, I'm going to try to say this without getting all in my message. But this is prepping for my message. All right. Watch this here. Now, we have people make pledges. Uh -huh. We have people pay, pay their pledges. And they didn't use their tithes and offerings. Because, you know how I know that? Because we already met the budget for the first week of the month. And still, we went over the budget. And the people still giving their thousands, five hundred. Y'all ain't hear me? See, you don't need a whole bunch of suckers. All you need is just a handful of committed people, and you'll do better. I'm talking to some preachers this morning. You just need a handful of people that are committed. See, suckers suck from those that are committed. That's why God said the shaking has started, and all that can be shaken will be shaken. Because see, you could do more with. Let, let, let me get to the word. Let me get to the word. Let me get to the word. Preacher, um, read our first passage. Luke 6 and 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for the abundance of the heart 
His mouth speaketh. For of the abundance, oh, out of the abundance well. of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's why it's so important to watch what we say. Amen. 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 A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is what? Good. And we're going to find out what's good. Keep reading, preaching. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Uh-oh, he's Jesus is saying. In other words, don't call me Lord. I'm not your Lord if you're not doing what I'm telling you to do. Yeah. Don't call me Lord. Don't do it. Why call me Lord? And you're not doing what I said to do. Keep reading, preaching. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them. And what? Doeth them. And what? Doeth them. Go ahead. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When you pledge and paying your pledges, you digging deep. Because see, you can say a lot. Pastor, I love you. Pastor, we never going to leave you. We here to the end. I'm going to help you build. But we rob God. But we all in everybody else lane. But you have to hear his sayings and do what? Do them. Go ahead. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. It said what? When the flood arose. It didn't say if a flood will arise. It didn't say. It said what? When. Into each life some rain must fall. Anything in life that you want that's worth anything, you're going to have to go through some things to get to it. Oh, there is a flood. It, it that's coming. Either you're coming out of flood or you're going into a flood. But when the flood arose, it didn't say if. When the flood arose, what happened? The stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it. Could not shake it. The flood gonna come. But if you lay your house on the foundation of the rock, the rock let the stream come. Let the flood arose. Let it beat vehemently upon your house. And for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because we ain't trying to get shaken. We're going to do what God called us to do because we want every benefit that God has in store for us. We have an inheritance. And I'm getting mine as for me and my house. Amen. Read, preach. For it was founded upon a rock. That rock. Let me tell you a little bit about that rock. It was founded upon a rock. See, some people build their homes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some people build a house on the dirt. It ain't going to stand. It don't have a foundation. It won't stand. Any little wind could come and blow the whole thing down. It'd be like a house of cards. Anybody ever build a house out of playing cards? Yes. That's what your house be like if you build it on the sand. But if you dig deep, how you dig deep, preacher? Serving God. How you dig deep, people? Give it. How you dig deep, people? Uh, witnessing the people. How do you dig deep? You sacrifice. How do you dig deep? You stay committed. How do you dig? That's a because you're digging deep because you're trying to find that rock. You're trying to find the rock that walked with the children of Israel the 40 years in the wilderness. You're trying to find the rock. And you got to dig deep to find the rock. Amen. Some people build their house on the earth, the dirt, the world system. See, some people will build a house on the world system. They'll rob God to buy a house. They'll rob God to go on vacation and have a miserable time. You understand? See, people buy houses all the time and lose them all the time. How you, how you going to be in the kingdom and use the world system? Some people build a house on the world system, but then some build a house on the rock. 
And that's why when the storm comes and, and the stream beat vehemently, no matter how hard it beat, no matter how hard it sway, my house don't stink. He that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation didn't be, who would build a house and don't lay a foundation. That's the craziest thing in the world. Amen. To build a house with no foundation. Amen. Go ahead, preacher. Built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat the hymn. It's going to beat whether you do God's work or not. The storm going to rain. Whether you beat it or not. Go ahead. And immediately it fell. And, and what the, happened to the house? And the ruin of that house was great. great. Mm. Who, who's talking? Jesus. Jesus. Is Jesus saying this? Yes, sir. This ain't Luke talking. All right. Amen. 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 All right, now let's see how to lay it on the foundation. Amen. This is how we lay the foundation. Right, all right, all right. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Jesus is saying, mm -hmm. let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Sister Scott, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Don't let your heart be troubled. Right. Believe in God, yeah. believe also in me. Amen. For in my Father's house right. are many mansions. Amen. In my in my Father's house when I laid the foundation are many mansions Amen. that already got the foundation laid. Yeah. It will not be taken. Yeah. And if it were not so, I'd have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Why are we worried? Why are we stressed? God said, let not your heart be troubled. He don't want you having heart attacks. He don't want you having strokes. He, he, God wants us in peace. Yes. God wants us confidently trusting Amen. in him. Amen. He has a mansion laid out for you in your father's house. Yes. We don't have anything to worry about yes. because we're on a journey trying to get to our father's house. Yes. And the way we get to our father's house is we take care of our house. Fifteen. Yes. Chapter of John, that was the 14th. 15th chapter of John, I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. What he's saying, Jesus is saying, that I'm the trunk of the tree. My father is the soil where I get my nutrients. And every branch, that's you and I, in me that beareth not fruit, he do what? Take it away. Amen. You got to purge some things out of your life. Amen. He does not bear fruit. God does what? Take it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he does what? Purge. Well, you know what purge means? Cut it back. Trim it off. It, it, it's, it's like ladies when your hair grows. So, and then it stopped growing, then it started falling out and all that. Well, you got to purge it. You got to cut the split ends. You got to cut the hair, the dead stuff off. And then what happens? It grows back fuller. You got trees and bushes out here that if you don't trim them back, they will die. You got to cut them back so new growth can come. If you don't cut it back, the dead will suck away from what's alive and kill the whole tree. So you got to cut some stuff back. So it could grow back better and stronger. 
Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I will abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except that it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. He's using, he's using an, an, an analogy of a tree. Yeah. He says, I'm the trunk of the tree. Uh -huh. I get my sustenance from the ground. Yeah. And then I give the sustenance that I get from the ground that's rooted and grounded in my father. I bring those nutrients up and I give them to you, which are the branches. Yeah. And then I expect my branch to bring forth what? Fruit. And if the branch don't bring forth fruit, cut it off. And give more to the ones that's bringing forth fruit. Bless those that are bringing forth fruit. You see. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him the same Bring forth much fruit. See, here's the key. If you want to bring forth fruit, you got to abide in Jesus. Amen. You got to live in God. You got to keep your being in God. Because what happens, God sends somebody across our path every day. But if we so in the self, and what I'm going to do Friday night, you understand? Those people pass right by us. Because we're not abiding in Christ. we so caught up in trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to do everything but what God called us to do. So if we abide, check it out, I'm giving you the tip right now. I'm the vine, you are the branches, he that abide in me and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can build a whole bunch of crap on the earth. Okay. It's going to fall. Yeah. It ain't going to last. If you're a child of God. You see, and those worldly people that's robbing and doing all these things, keep watching. Okay. David said, I looked at the prosperity of the wicked and my foot almost slipped, but it didn't. Okay. And what happened to the prosperity of the wicked? Okay. You don't hear nothing about them. But you hear about David. Oh yeah, you hear about David. Seventh verse, sixth verse. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. He's cut off the branch with it. And men gathered him and cast him into the fire. And they are what? Burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you because see God wants to bless you but we can't be about his business see we supposed to be producing fruit we ain't talking about apples and oranges unless you are apple tree if you are a people tree you're supposed to be producing what people yeah see and then you could ask the father Whatever you will, and Jesus said, it will be done unto you. I'm reading the Bible this time. And it will be done for you. And it shall be done. Thank you, First Lady, unto you. And this is why Jesus wants this to happen. Read the next verse, preacher, the eighth, 15, 8. This is why. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Herein is my Father what? Glorified. God gets the glory yes. when you bring forth fruit. When you care about somebody else enough to tell them how good God is. Not only tell them how good God is, but you show them how good God is. And then God blesses you because you are glorifying him through what you do for somebody else. Herein 
is my Father glorified. And when you glorify the Father, oh, he, he'll give you what you need. He'll give you what you ask for. Well, this is Jesus on here. I'm just reading the Bible. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear what? Much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. If you continue in my love. Let's go to 16. It's my time getting away. Ye have not chosen me. Jesus said you didn't choose me. Jesus said I chose you. And ordained you. That ye should go and bring forth what? Fruit. And that your fruit, fruit should what? Remain. What that mean? Remain. You don't just bring some, you don't just, when pastors say bring somebody to church, you go through your phone and see who, who could I call? Oh, this one right here. Girl, I need you to come to church with me today. Pastor said bring somebody to church. So they come, you know, all that old foolishness. No, quit using them old nuts and uh, get some new fruit. Amen. Go get some new fruit. Quit calling that old nut that you know going to come to one Sunday. And they may come too, but that's the end of that until pastors say again. Amen. You know, oh, let me, I, I need you to come again. <laughs> and that your fruit should what? Remain. If your fruit remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Because, see, God wants to show you off. God wants to bless you. Because when you start bringing forth fruit, when you start getting folks saved, when you start bringing them in the kingdom, he bless you more because he wants you to bring forth more fruit. And the more people you bring, the more he's going to bless you because he wants you looking good. He said, that's my son. Oh, he's doing his job. I'm going to hook him up. I'm going to give him all the desires of his heart. I'm going to do what I told him to do. I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do for him because he's doing what I told him to do. I'm going to keep blessing and keep blessing long as we keep doing what God told us to do. You see, there's a scripture in Ezekiel that says, if you see somebody living in sin and you don't say nothing to them, when they lift their hands, when you lift your hands, their blood is dripping off your hands. Because you didn't care enough about them to tell them how good God is. You don't have to tell them. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing Keep saying that long enough. It's going to sound like you did on somebody. Yeah. No, you tell them how good God is. You tell them how much God loves us no matter what we do. There's nothing we can't do to stop God from loving us. All he's waiting for us to do is to wake up and realize how much he loves us and how good he is. You see how good he's been? But see, we want to talk about Trump and, and all these other idiots. Somebody told me something the other day about Trump. I said, look, let me explain something to you. I could give a darn what Trump, the, uh, all these other people doing. I don't waste my time thinking about that. I use my brain to figure out what I'm doing. I could care less what all these idiots are doing. They ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. They ain't doing nothing for me. You understand? So I ain't concerned about Trump or whatever, nothing else. You understand? Amen. Because I'm concerned about what we doing. Yeah. I'm concerned about building God's kingdom. Yeah. I could care less about building on this earth. Right. System. We're going to build the kingdom of right. God. Amen. And watch God keep blowing Woo. our minds. Hi. That's what we do. Amen. We're going to watch it. Keep blowing our mind. These things, I what? Command you that you love one another. We have to get to the point, church, where we love people enough to mentor them, to make sure they remain, to make sure that they, Satan don't destroy their lives. We got to love people. Jesus said, I command you to love one another. You see, he's commanding us to do that. Amen. Amen. So as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because, see, we work too hard to let our house fall. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We're going to look the part. We're going to walk the part. 
we're going to talk the part, and we're just going to keep loving God. Hallelujah, Lord. Now, I'm going to cut everybody a little slack today because uh, it was my fault I take my hand. I told y'all the last minute what Bishop said, you know, because I was working. I'm guilty. I, I repent. But next week, don't come up in here by yourself. Thank you. Amen. Next week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got the whole week to go do what Jesus told us to do. Amen. You understand? Yes, sir. You got all week. Next Sunday, bring somebody in here with you. Amen. Next Sunday. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We're going to do what God called us to do because he's been too good to Amen. us. Amen. You understand? He's been too good to yes. everything we set our hands to do. He blesses it. Amen. You understand? And he's been too good to us for us not to do what he commanded us to do. He didn't ask us to do this. He commanded us to do this. And see, when you bring forth fruit like that, God blesses you. He blesses you. He don't let stuff happen to you to take you out the box. Whatever he allow to happen, it makes you better. It just purge you so you can come back stronger, so you can come back better, so you can come back wiser. You understand? Amen. And that's the way we live. That is the way we live. Amen. Bless us so tremendously. It blows your mind. Some of the things God has done for us, it blows my mind. I, could, I couldn't even imagine being here where we are right now. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But he's just so good. Amen. He is so good to us. And we ought to be good to him. Amen. Amen. We, we ought to be good to him. We ought to love somebody enough. To bring them to the kingdom. We ought to love somebody enough to have them remain. We ought to love somebody enough to share this good life. How many of you got a good life in Christ? If you got a good life, why don't you give him some praise? Why don't you give him some glory? See, some of y'all may not realize you have a good life. Some of us may not have enough sense to realize that God has been good. But if he's been good, we ought to just give him some praise. We ought to just take some moment and give him some glory. Let him know we appreciate him. Let him know we adore him. We honor him. Lord, you've been good, and I repent, and I'm going to bring somebody to church Sunday. I'm going to make sure that I keep my eyes open and my ears open. I'm going to hear your voice. I'm going to stay in your presence, Lord. I'm going to be watchful. I'm going to stay in your presence. I'm going to stay in communication. I'm going to hear your voice in the voice of a stranger. I will not follow. I'm, I'm going to roll all my works upon you, Lord. And I know you're going to direct my path. You're going to direct my path. You're going to make me the perfect laborer for somebody this week that's in need. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord God. And see, that's how we will stay blessed. That's how God's blessings will stay on our lives. That's how God will blow our minds. Thank you, Lord God. By us producing fruit. See, somebody loved you enough. When are you going to repay the faith? When are you going to repay the faith? Somebody loved you enough to get you in here. Somebody loved you enough to make sure you remain. How many people lives been blessed since they remained? How many people lives been blessed? Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Ask me. Ask me. Has my life been blessed? Somebody say, Pastor, is your life been blessed? Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for turning me around, placing my feet on solid ground. Thank you, Lord, for my deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for my sanctification. Oh, Lord, I give you praise and honor. I love you this morning, Lord. I appreciate you this morning, Lord. You saved all my children. You kept all my grandchildren. You blessed us, Lord, and we love you for it today. We give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. You alone are worthy, Lord, and worthy to be praised. I 
thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you're leading and directing my path. I thank you that I'm the perfect laborer. I thank you that I'm a witness unto you because I have the precious Holy Ghost living inside of me. Lead God in directing me, teaching me all things and bringing all things to my remembrance. Whatsoever you've taught me, I thank you, Lord God, that I'm anointed from my head to my toes. I thank you, Lord God, that I walk in divine health, wealth, and prosperity. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing everything I set my hands to do. I thank you, Lord, that you've blessed me to be a blessing. I thank you, Lord, that I'm the lender and not the borrower. I thank you, Lord, that I'm the head and not the tail. The above only and never beneath. I thank you, Lord God, because you've been so good to me. I just give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. Because you're great and greatly to be praised. You've been true to your word. And your word has not failed. And I thank you this morning. I give your name all the praise. All the honor. And all the glory. You all keep. You all that are doing what God called you to do, keep doing it. Amen. Take it up another notch. Yes, yes, Amen. And those of you that are not doing what God called you to do, just repent right where you are. Just repent. Just raise your hands to the Father. And Father, I ask that you forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for being selfish. Forgive me, Lord, for being petty. Forbid, forgive me, Lord, for being critical and judgmental. Forgive me, Father God. Father, allow the fruit of the Spirit to be in operation in my life. Lord, allow me to love more. Allow me to have more peace, more patience, more meekness, more temperance, more gentleness, more kindness, more goodness, Lord. Let the fruit of the Spirit be in operation in my life. Where I draw people, Lord, where your light, your love will draw people to me, Father. And they will understand how good you are. They will see your goodness through my life. And Lord, I will never be too ashamed to tell somebody how good you are, what you've done, how you've blessed, how you've delivered. I will never be ashamed, Lord, to touch somebody else, Lord, to give somebody a hug, to give somebody a smile, to say God bless you to somebody, to bless my food at the restaurant. I lie, not silently, but if you're blessed, let everybody know I'm blessing my food. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm I'm not ashamed of my Lord, but I love my Lord, and he loves me, and he's been so good to me that I can't turn around, I can't walk back, I can't stop, because he's been so good. Hallelujah, Lord. And what he's done for me, he can do for you. And Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord, for slacking up. Forgive us, Lord. Help us, Father, to reproduce ourselves. And Father, if there's anything in us that you're not pleased with, we ask your forgiveness right now. Lord, bring illumination to our minds. Search our hearts, Lord. Search our hearts. Reveal to us anything, Lord, that you're not pleased with. And help us to walk in your anointing. Help us to walk in your love, in your joy, in your peace. Help us, Help us to show the world how great you are. Thank you, Lord. Let your light shine through us. In Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Come on, let's give God a praise. Let's give him glory. Honor the Lord, oh my soul, that all that is within me will bless his holy man. I sought the Lord and he heard my cry. And I thank you for it, Lord. We give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise.